in this video, I'm going to share with you guys the exact strategy I'm currently using to make over $100,000 per month on TikTok shop. I truly believe that right now, TikTok and TikTok shop is the modern day gold rush for e-commerce businesses. And there's no better time to take advantage of it than right now. Now, I do want to preface this video with saying that there is uncertainty around TikTok and how much longer it's going to be available for in the US. However, it's a game changer that you don't want to miss out on. So with that said, let's get right into it. So here we are in inside of the TikTok Seller Central. This is live, by the way. I'll quickly refresh just to confirm. As you guys can see, in the last 28 days, I've had 27,000 visitors, 1,800 orders, and I've made $101,000 in sales. Here's a high level overview of the overall strategy that allowed me to build this TikTok shop from zero to over $100,000 per month. As you guys can see, I've broken it down by the different mechanisms that I've used. So first we have product, then we have creator sourcing, Next, we have content. And last but not least, we have scaling across organic and paid ads. So essentially what I've done is build out this TikTok shop, but even more importantly, this content infrastructure. It does all start, however, within TikTok though. And then we expand onto other channels and also across paid ads. So let's just dive right in. There's a lot that I want to cover here. So, so the first thing I wanted to cover is the product. This is the most important part of this overall strategy. Without a good product, this strategy does not work. I have worked with brands that have tried to implement this strategy and they didn't have good products or they didn't have products that actually met customer expectations and they did not see results with this. So I did want to share that up front. Next is there are some products that will be a lot better fit for this compared to others. For example, I've worked with a skincare brand that sold basic products like moisturizers, cleansers, and things like that. And they had a much harder time actually leveraging this strategy because it was difficult finding ways to create videos that would go viral around these products, right? There wasn't that many angles or hooks that you could actually use with a basic cleanser or a basic moisturizer. So that is one thing I also wanted to point out at the very beginning. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, if you do have products that there is a lot of angles that you can create for videos and there are a lot of different hooks you can try out to really, you know, get somebody to watch the content, but also share and like have these videos go viral, then you will benefit fit a lot from this strategy. So that's one of the very first things I wanted to start off with, right? You can see that again, if I zoom out on the whole strategy, like it literally all stems from the product. This would not have been possible if I did not have a product that customers were actually interested in and they were actually leaving reviews on the products and saying good things about the product because this strategy works because you get to leverage social proof and what other people have to say about the product. So one of the very first things I wanted to cover. Next, we have creator sourcing. So this is the first mechanism within this entire infrastructure. We have one dedicated person that follows a standard operating procedure for outreach. This person does outreach through TikTok, Twitter, emails, and anywhere where we can possibly reach these creators. And so part of their procedure includes how to filter through these creators, um, how to negotiate terms and conditions, and how to finalize and actually onboard the content creators. Next is every single brand has its own customer persona. So we tailor our approach personally for our demographics. So what I mean by that is the content creators that we work with resemble the ideal target demographic that we're targeting. So for us, that's males 25 plus. And so when we're reaching out to creators for our brand, we're specifically reaching out to males 25 plus, right? Ideally, your ideal customers can relate a lot more to people that are just like them. So it's important to try to match your content creators as much as you can to the ideal customer that you want to target. Now, next is we focus on working with creators on either commission only retainers or retainers and commission, depending on their experience level and history. Now, if you're just getting started and you have a new brand that doesn't have any presence on TikTok, you don't have any leverage. And so you may not be able to actually work with creators on commission only, right? Because usually creators are looking to work with brands that already have some social proof and that they know that if they create content for the brand, they're actually going to get results. And so in my experience, the kind of deal structures you can work out with creators solely depends on the amount of leverage you have as a brand. So for us, now that we've built credibility and we have a lot of videos that have gone viral and other creators that have done really well, we now have leverage where we can work with creators on, you know, commission 
commission only, commission and retainers. And we can actually really negotiate our terms because these creators can see that other creators have already had results working with us. And so that is one thing I wanted to point out because a lot of you guys watching this video, you may be in, you may be just getting started. So you may not have much of a presence on TikTok, but some of you guys that already have a presence on TikTok, you have leverage and you want to, and you want to use that leverage that you have. So that's one thing I wanted to point out. Next is onboarding and management. So we work with 12 to 15 creators each and every single month. And so once we finalize these creators, we add them to our internal discord and our creator manager onboards them and ships out products immediately. And so basically this creator manager is just somebody that works closely with the content creators and provides them with everything they need to actually do well. After we get products shipped out, the next thing that we do is while they wait for these products to arrive, we equip them with everything that they need to do well. So we provide them their own TikTok accounts, our brand guide, our do's and don'ts, and we we provide them with examples of high and low performing videos. So to be even more specific, right? We specifically identify what are the top performing angles and hooks that are currently working right now. So what we do is, so we have a tracker that we use where we track all of the content that's being created from every single creator. And so for us, it's very easy for us to pinpoint what's currently working is because with TikTok, things move very quickly. And so what worked last month, last week may not be working this month and this week. And so it's very important to keep track of all the data and be able to share these insights with our creators. So what we do is we've identified that there are really six different types of content, right? You have influencer driven content, AI content, green screen content, etc. And so what we do is we break down from each one of these types of content, what's doing the best, right? Once creators receive the products, the next thing that happens is we require the creators to share their content every single day inside of our discord for a review. And what we're looking at is, okay, are creators actually following our brand guidelines? Are they following our do's and don'ts? And are they actually leveraging the insights that we're providing? them right because again our goal this is a mutually beneficial relationship we want to provide our creators with as much insights and tools and resources as we can to help them succeed because if they succeed we succeed now the next thing is our creator manager does verify the posts that they share provides feedback and shares latest trends and hooks to keep the content fresh right so like i said we're consistently staying on top of the current top performing angles and hooks because this is part of how this ecosystem all works and how we actually achieve scale, right? Because this takes me to the next part. So the next part in, in this whole equation is once these content creators start to post content, which by the way, to get an idea of the amount of content we're getting posted, again, we have 12 to 15 creators we work with each month and all of them have to post one video a day the whole month. So it's a lot of content that we're getting posted and obviously we're working on scaling our way up. That's where we're currently at, but we're looking to um, get even more aggressive and, and double and even triple that. But once we have the content being posted, Posted, our creator manager is looking to identify what are the top performing angles and hooks from the new content that's created, right? And again, we're looking for the most recent insights up to date, not what's worked in the past up to date. And the reason why is because once we identify the top performing angles and hooks from the new content that was created, we then start to scale. And this is the next mechanism within this entire infrastructure, right? We first start to scale by taking the top performing hooks and angles and having our other creators uh, recreate the top performing hooks and angles. That's that's the first way that we scale. Next is we have an in-house editor and reposter that takes the top performing angles and hooks that have done well, and they start to redistribute that content across our other channels. So across Instagram Reels, across Facebook Reels, and across YouTube Shorts, right? So we can expand our reach. And overall, that's how we start achieving scale. And like I said, right, like this stuff actually works. Like, so just to show the kind of reach we're getting with this approach, I have a screenshot of our internal tracker where we track things like the amount of videos being put out per creator, the amount of views they're getting, a link to their TikTok shop, link to their TikTok and some notes. And you can see here that in April alone, only on TikTok from 86 videos, we had 700,000 views right now obviously this isn't like an insane amount but this is only some of the creators that i'm showing right here so you can only imagine the kind of scale we can get by taking the same content that's doable on tiktok and 
repurposing and reusing that content across Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Now, we're not getting as much reach across uh, these other channels, but we're still getting pretty significant reach, right, overall. Next, we scale with paid media. This is how we achieve escape velocity. So something that we have seen work consistently well is taking the top performing content from TikTok and leveraging that for paid ads on YouTube Shorts, TikTok and TikTok Shop ads, and Facebook and Instagram ads. And we're consistently seeing this work extremely, extremely well. So our typical workflow is any content that goes viral and gets really good engagement, really good views, we then send that to our media buyers to test across these channels. And this has a high, very high high hit rate. Like we're consistently seeing really strong performance from videos that do well organically across paid ads. So just to recap, with this strategy, we generated $101,000 on TikTok shop alone in the last 28 days. Here's a breakdown of the costs involved. So we spent $11,000 on creators. That's a breakdown between commissions and retainers. We spent $29,000 on ads. So total costs came in at $40,000 total. And again, it doesn't just end there, right? This does not include the sales that we generated from people that purchased outside of TikTok shop. For example, after implementing this strategy, we immediately saw exponential growth on our Amazon sales. Also, this is only the results for the last 28 days. This does not include the sales that we will continue to generate from the ads that we're leveraging currently, right? So like I mentioned, we use the top performing videos across all of our advertising channels. And so we have ads that are currently running right now that are top performing organic videos. And these ads have generated hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales for us. And this is really where we see the value of this overall strategy. We're not solely dependent on only the, tr the organic traffic that's coming in from TikTok organic or the organic reach. We're focusing on the scalable traffic that we can control that comes from this strategy with paid ads, right? At the end of the day, paid ads, you have the most leverage. And so I wanted to make sure I mentioned that because for us, like this is the backbone of our overall marketing strategy. This strategy was a a huge contributor to me being able to scale a brand from zero to over three million dollars in sales in such a short time period if you haven't seen the video where i did that full breakdown make sure you take some time to watch that video there's going to be a link down below this video where you can check it out i guarantee you there's going to be things in there that can hopefully uh, help you also leverage some of the same insights and strategies that um, help me as well so yeah i mean those are some of the main things that i wanted to overall cover in this video i tried to squeeze in as much as I can. Obviously, there are more specifics that go into, you know, each of these different mechanisms, each of these different procedures and processes. But um, if you have any questions about anything that I covered in this video, feel free to drop it down below or reach out to me directly. Um, if you got any value from this video, I'd appreciate if you dropped a like and subscribe to the channel and we'll end there. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.